Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Osselbury in Hampshire. It's about five miles south of Winchester, just inside the South Downs National Park. And we're going to be doing a roughly five and a half mile circular route to the south We'll have a quick look through the village and then uh, we'll be going along an old Roman road past Marwell House and Marwell Zoo and then back to the village. And hopefully along the way we're going to see some quite stunning countryside. Now I'm filming uh, in the summer. It is another glorious sunny day. A few clouds about. Um, it's supposed to cloud over a little bit later on but hopefully we should be okay for the walk. Quite warm but we've got plenty of water. So do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car in the main uh, street that goes through Osselbury, with consideration uh, to the residents, of course. Let's have a little exploration. Well, we'll start at the western end of the village with this wonderful pub, the Ship Inn, which I believe originates uh, back to 1681. And I was reading that uh, well, timbers from an old wooden sailing vessel were used in its construction hence its name and it's got some wonderful uh, exposed beams in the old bar and it's got a brilliant uh, beer garden and I expect that's where we'll be heading right at the end of the walk. We're heading eastwards now just along the main road that goes through the village. Pond Cottage there, date of 1860. I love that uh, timber frame building there, the farmhouse with thatch and oh, look at the, uh, is that a, a pheasant on the very top there? Oh I think this is my favourite so far of the, the flint on the side and the thatch, Old Wells Cottage, really is a pretty little village. Of course they they have such lovely names. You've got Shepherd's Cottage here. What's this one? The Old Shop, which I guess was once a shop. What's that, a date of 1857 up on the wall there. Right, we should be heading towards the church next, I think. Well, this is the Church of St Andrews. The uh, nave and chancel were built in the 14th century and transepts added in the 15th century. The west tower was rebuilt in the 17th century, I think it's got six bells, and the whole church was enlarged and restored in the 19th century. The uh, entrance door frame originates from uh, the old Marwell Hall, more on the hall later, and the clock was bought in 1898 to mark the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria and under the clock on the wall is a plaque JF and TC in the date 1675 and I believe that relates to John Friend and Thomas Court who were church wardens at the time. The uh, gates to the uh, church were installed in 1953 to mark the coronation of the Queen. Let's have a look inside. Okay, in we go. I have found some lights, there's the uh, font which I believe is 15th century. I love the little wooden barrel hold, holding the water. Now there's a few interesting things to, to look at in this church, one of which is over in the corner here. Now hopefully the sunlight's not going to spoil this, but look at this, it's a very unusual musical instruments called a, a serpent apparently, um, a sort of a wind instrument thought to have been invented in France in the 18th century, although some say possibly as early as the 16th century, but it started to be used in orchestras in the mid 19th century. It's uh, basically a distant ancestor of the tuba and closely related to a, a cornet, uh, but it's not actually part of the cornet family because uh, well, it doesn't have a thumb hole. <laughs> Not that I'm any ex expert at all on musical instruments. Okay, well, let's uh, have a, a little bit more of a, a wander. There's the, um, the organ in the corner.
corner there. Wonderful uh, wooden beams in the ceiling. And uh, a terrific stained glass window here above the altar. Now, talking about stained glass windows, um, Van Gogh, or Van Gogh, if you're American, the uh, 19th century uh, Impressionist painter, well, he apparently saw some sketches of uh, the designs for some of these windows at a studio at uh, the stained glass makers Cotter and Co in uh, London in 1876. And basically they inspired him and, uh, well, he, he wrote passionately about them to his brother, Theo uh, Van Gogh. Anyway, Van Gogh, he, he died in uh, 1890. But... Uh, the two windows in particular, one sort of either side um, of the, uh, the chancel, they're about a, a metre high, and they were commissioned by uh, William Carnegie as a memorial uh, to his wife and uh, daughter, who both died before him. Now, both of the windows uh, um, show women, and they're depicted as the Virgin Mary, uh, one in her youth, and one in her old age. Um, so, well, the one on the right, let's have a look. Ah, it does actually have a memorial at the bottom. Um, memory of Lady Margaret Carnegie, who died in 1871. And then over on the other side, in memory of Georgina, Countess of North Esk died 1874. What a wonderful, pretty little church. Now there are various theories regarding the origin of the name of the village. Uh, Osler may be Anglo-Saxon, but it might also relate to um, something called the uh, Ring Oozel, which uh, is a bird visitor between April and October. It's, it's like a blackbird with a white crescent breast. The uh, berry bit obviously is, uh, means fortified place. Apparently it's also uh, one of the highest villages in Hampshire. Right, let's uh, kick off into the, the countryside. Just before we uh, leave the village, uh, a little uh, story from the past. Back on the uh, 23rd of November 1830 there were riots here. Uh, discontented agricultural workers went from farm to farm demanding money and threatening to destroy farm machinery. It was all part of the infamous swing riots in southern England. And 245 of the rioters were tried at uh, Winchester. Indeed, a couple of them were executed. Well, a quick update of where we are, where we've been, where we're going. So the church was just behind the wall there and uh, the footpath goes through the churchyard and we're now going to start basically heading southwards. In fact, the route that we're on is uh, actually on a couple of uh, long distance trails. Uh, firstly, it's on the Monarch's Way, which is a, a 625 mile long distance path that uh, is supposed to represent the uh, escape route of King Charles II after his defeat at the Battle of Worcester in 1651. Uh, it basically goes from uh, well, Worcester to Bristol and then Yeovil and then Shoreham. I think it was uh, established in the 1990s. And we're also on the um, Pilgrim's Trail, which is a 155 mile long distance path from Winchester Cathedral to uh, Mont Saint-Michel in Normandy. Uh, you can catch the ferry if you don't want to get your feet wet. <laughs> The UK section, which I think is called the Hampshire Millennium Pilgrim's Trail, is only 29 miles long and it was opened in 1999. And it's waymarked with green discs. I think the uh, waymarks 
in France are blue discs and it basically follows a, a medieval route that pilgrims used to take uh, when they were going to Winchester Cathedral to um, pay homage to the shrine of St Swithin. Now this trail uh, takes us along the side of a field and you can see these uh, rather strange serpent-like patterns on the side of a hill here but this is actually a motocross circuit uh, home of Winchester Motocross Club Apparently they hold four meetings a year, solo and sidecar. Looks a fun place to come and watch, that's for sure. I'm now getting to enjoy some uh, typical Hampshire rolling countryside on a, a dead straight track and I just looked at the map and sure enough it is an old Roman road. Yep, it's uh, Blackberry O'Clock. Self-service. You find plenty of black ones. Yeah. They're not quite as ripe as uh, some of the others that we saw last week, are they? <laughs> Good boy. It really is quite glorious now. Now, this is an important part of the, the walk if you're going to be uh, following this after watching the video. We made our way through a quite glorious bit of uh, woodland with shade. It really was quite uh, enchanting. Um, and then we, about 600 yards to the north, we said goodbye to that Roman road. That sort of continues heading in a sort of, I suppose, southeasterly direction. We carried on south for about 600 yards and we now have come to this, uh, if I slowly turn the camera around, um, well we're basically going to say goodbye to the Monarch's Way which sort of, well there's one arrow going to the left and one heading straight on. Uh, if I look down here you can see, yeah there's a track which it carries on but we are heading to my right which is in a sort of westerly direction which is going to take us eventually to Marwell. Well, we're continuing to head westwards and on my right through this fence here we can see this uh, splendid brick building. It's Marwell House. Now a 1909 map shows it as Marwell Lodge and it was originally built in the 18th century with extensions added in 1938 and uh, well it was remodelled uh, completely in 2006. I love the uh, uh, is that a statue of a horse in front there? I'll have to get my zoom camera out. Well, we've now made it to Marwell and we've just passed the, uh, the gates to Marwell House, coming down Lower Baybridge Lane. And we're just going to cross the road and follow a footpath that's going to take us along the side of Marwell Zoo. Well, just poking my camera through the fence here, you can see a little bit <laughs> of Marwell Zoo and uh, as it's a uh, bank holiday weekend coming up, there's no surprise that it's absolutely heaving in there. I'm not 100% sure what type of animal is behind that building, so uh, 
we'll kick on. Well, the area where the zoo's located was uh, once a deer park owned by the Bishop of Winchester. Indeed, a, an ordnance survey map shows a, a park pale to, to the south. I think the park was about four miles round in total, but uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the zoo's history shortly. Well, a little bit more of the zoo over the fence there. That looks like the picnic area. And as far as its history, well, a chap called John Knowles bought uh, Marwell Hall, which I'll tell you a, bit, a little bit about shortly, in 1968 to create a zoo. And it finally opened in 1972. Apparently he sold his Rolls Royce to buy some zebras. And it's home now to over 1,200 animals of uh, 149 species and covers about 140 acres. Knowles actually died in 2019 and it's now owned by a, a global conservation society come charity um, called Marwell Wildlife, I think. Well, the footpath that uh, runs parallel to the zoo takes us along through a oh, quite exquisite little woodland glade. It really is quite peaceful, well, apart from the, the screaming children at the zoo. Now, um, we, I don't think we're going to be able to see Marwell Hall, which is the, the main building at the zoo. So, well, seeing as I've done all the research on it, let me tell you a bit about it anyway and put some pictures up. It uh, was a manor house uh, rebuilt in 1816 on the site of a, an earlier building that uh, in turn was built in 1320 and remodelled in the 16th century. Now there's a rumour that uh, Henry VIII and Lady Jane Seymour married secretly there, although official history states they married in a private ceremony in the Queen's Closet at uh, Whitehall Palace in London on the 30th of May 1536. Now, just a tiny bit of housekeeping for this walk. Uh, I mean, it's bone dry at the moment because uh, we're just in the middle of a drought, but it wouldn't surprise me if in the winter this can get quite uh, boggy on the side of the zoo. So there is an alternative. You can walk along um, a road just to the south of here. Another little update on the route. So the footpath that uh, goes along the side of the zoo comes out there. That is the zoo entrance and uh, with all the price lists there looks like it's 25 pounds for an adult for the day 21 pounds for a child now we need to start heading northwards just along the side of the car park on our homeward leg back to Balsabury starting to slightly go uphill. <laughs> Not long to go now. So we've just come through a really pretty woodland area called Horsham Copse and now I say it's the final bit heading um, northeast along a looks like an old track called Water Lane and I'm already dreaming of that uh, first point at the ship inn back at the village. Well, folks, we've made it back to the ship in. We hope you enjoyed the walk. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and uh, do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Taves Countryside Walks. What a super walk today. 
I see the pub has got a patang. Is that how you pronounce it? Court or pitch? So we'll have a go later. So in the meantime, we'll have a pint of, uh, I think it's called Swing Riot. <laughs> but anyway, until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Right, you fancy a crisp? Oh, what have we got? Ready salted. <laughs> Cheers.